Okay, here we're going to be looking at how we would choose our interest rates, either an unrealistic interest rate or a realistic interest rate. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be trying to determine the interest rate on a note that's being in, issued in exchange for some land here. So for our prob problem here, our example, Corporation A sold land here to Corporation B in exchange for a four-year zero interest bearing note having a maturity value of $708,081. Now Corporation A pays 8% interest for the money that they normally borrow, while Corporation B, with their credit rating, requires a 12% interest rate on money they borrow. And the land originally cost Corporation A $295,000, which is its current carrying value here by Corporation A. And at the date of the sale, the land had a fair market value here of $450,000. So we're left with uh, our dilemma here on how we would choose our interest rate and what interest rate would be used here to discount this note. The 8% interest rate, the 12% interest rate, or some other market interest rate. So when we're dealing with these notes receivable uh, that aren't readily exchanged or exchanged for property, goods, or services, where we don't really have a in um, marketable interest rate on this note here, we have to follow these guidelines here. So the note received in exchange for property, goods, or services based on an arm's length transaction. The stated rate of interest is presumed to be the the fair, be fair unless one no interest rate is stated on the note and that for for our example we have a zero coupon note here or zero interest bearing note here so there's no interest rate stated and then two the stated interest rate is unreasonable so this is what we have to determine what the reasonable interest rate is here or three here the face amount on a note is material different than, different than the cash sales price so under these circumstances, these three circumstances here, the present value of the note is determined by the fair value of the property or goods or services, uh, services exchange. So what we have to do is we have to determine that present value of the note here and it's determined by this fair value of the goods or services exchange. So let's go down and look at our example here. And I got it laid out in a, a timeline here. So at the beginning, uh, the market value of the land here is $450,000. So what we have to do is we have to equate the present value of this note to the uh, fair market value of the land here at its issue date of the note here. And that we know uh, the fair market value of the land is $450,000. Now at the end of the, or at the fourth year here when this note becomes mature, the face amount on a note here is $708,081. So if we put that into our calculator here for our cash flow, we're going to determine that the internal rate of return here for this uh, on this cash flow is 12%. And we can determine here that present value of the note here uh, equals the fair market value of the property. And we can go up here and look at how we calculate that. So the present value of the note, let's uh, at, at a 12% interest rate discounted here for four years and the principal amount discounted back here at $708,081 at the beginning of the period using a 12% interest rate. Its present value here, well, it equate is 449998 which approximates our uh, market value of the land here, $450,000. So we could stop right here and we could uh, determine that, yes, this is the interest rate that we should be using because the market value of the land of 450000 equals the present value of our note here at 12%. Now let's go down here and look at, and again here, the discount on this note's receivable, let's go through that here, uh, $708,081 less the $450,000 uh, uh, note here, uh, the fair market value of the land here gives us, or the present value of this note here, gives us $258,081 that uh, we have the discount on this note's receivable here at 12%. Now let's go down here and look at the case here where we actually had the 8% interest rate that we would have used instead of the 12% here. So um, based on the 8%, the present value of the 8% here discounted back for four years, the principal amount here at $708,081, that would be uh, $520,460 as you can see here. So that's what the present value of the note receivable here uh, would be at the at its issue date here. And you can see that it's not equal to the land's fair market value. So the fair market value of the land here was 
$450,000. The present value of the note here uh, is $520,460 here. So it is, it is an equal here. So we have, this is where we have our, we'll violate our rules here. And it had we put it, uh, looked at our cash flow again here, beginning of the, or beginning of the, when we issued the note and four years out, uh, the face amount on the note here was $708,081. Again, plugging it into our calculator here for our cash flow, um, we would come up with 8% here. So with our cash flow here, our investment at 520, 520,460 with the face amount here at 708,081, $708, we get internal rate of return here of 8%, which equates to our present value that we used here at 8%. They, they equal each other. And then again, the discount on this notes receivable will take the $708,081 less the uh, uh, present value here of this note at $520,460. The difference here is $187,621. So let's go up here and look at uh, our, how we would balance this out and make our comparison here. So let's say we have their notes receivable. We would have debited that here for $708,081. And then we know what the can land's carrying value is. It was $295,000. That would have been a credit amount here. And then the gain on the sale of the land. Well, that's based off the fair market value of the land here. So we can calculate that. And that was $155,000. So let's go down and look at that here. So we had the fair market value of the uh, land here at $450,000 less the a book value or the carrying value of this land at 295,000. So the difference gives us $155,000 gain here. So going up here, uh, again, we have summing our credits here. Well, we don't know what our discount on our notes receivable is. That's the question mark here. So we don't know what percent we should use. But we know that we have to come up with a balance here of $708,081 and it has to compare with the notes receivable here at $708,081. So for our first case here, we use the 12% discount on this notes. Uh, again, $708,081. And then we determine our discount on our notes receivable here to be $250,000. $58,081. That's at the 12% rate. And then the land's carrying value is this, uh, be the same, $295,000. And the gain on the sale of land, $155,000. So uh, totaling our credits here, we come up with $708,081. And that balances with our debit amount here in our notes receivable, $708,081. So we can be sure here that the 12% uh, was the proper interest rate to, to use here. Now, just making a comparison here, had we used the 8% interest rate here, Again, we would have had our notes receivable at $708,081, but then our discount on our notes uh, receivable here that we calculated it, uh, to, at the 8% rate here was $187,621 plus the land's carrying value, $295,000 $295, plus the gain in the sale land, $155,000 gives us a total here of $637,621. Now you do our comparison here for our balancing our credits with our debits again. The notes receivable uh, of $708,081 does not compare with the $637,621. Down here, so we can determine here that this would be an unreasonable rate to use this eight percent here, because based on our discount amount here, and then we comparing that to the uh, gain here on the sale of the land based on its fair market value, and then the carrying value of the land. So just going back up here to follow, look at our rules again here. So when we're uh, when we're trying to determine the uh, interest rate that we should be using here on a note here and let's just say it's a notes that a note that's not readily tradable or it's exchanged for property goods and services and then number one here we don't know the interest rate or the stated rate on this note it's not determinable or the stated interest rate is unreasonable in this case we didn't know what it was but it it using one interest rate or the other interest rate, we determined that one was reasonable and the other was not reasonable. And then, of course, the face amount on a note is materially different than its cash sales price. So under these circumstances, the present value of the note is determined by the fair value of the property or goods or service exchange. So going back to our example here, we knew what the 
market value of the land was here at $450,000. So we could plug that into our uh, equation here, our time law, our, um, in our cash flow equation. We could plug the $450,000 in here. And we know that the present value of this note has to equate to the market value of the land here. It has to equal the fair uh, uh, value of this property here. So plugging that in here, uh, the $450,000 cash outflow here, and then the face amount of the note, we knew what that was, $708,081. So uh, using our internal rate of return function on our calculator, we determine that to be 12% here. And we confirm that here just by discounting using the present value function here, discounting the $708,081 back here for four years at the 12% interest rate. That gives us the same amount here of $450,000. So based on that, we were able to determine the uh, realistic interest rate here that should have been used in discounting this notes uh, receivable here.